Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So I started a series of videos a while back on the channel called Film Criticism is Dead. And I can't really make one of those videos for Obi-Wan yet because there's only really three reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Fuck you! <laughs> My initial goal with those videos was to explore the very biased opinions that sometimes infiltrate some people's reviews. Whether that be on Rotten Tomatoes, YouTube, in the media, or on social media. People always seem to have a way of making their review about everything except what we're actually seeing on screen. And yes, oftentimes that means creating problems where there aren't any. But I discovered yet another layer to this problem today, and it involves people like myself who tend to criticize things objectively. Fuck me, right? Why is it that when we do that, we typically face backlash, as if some things are somehow above criticism? You see that a lot in Marvel, and you even see it in DC from time to time. But I'm starting to think that one of the worst and most protected properties of them all is Star Wars. Because it's one thing for me to give delusional fanboys a dose of reality, I can do that all day long. What's funny is, is that for as much as Marvel Studios has been criticized, especially lately, you don't really see a lot of blowback from Marvel Studios themselves. No shit. Not like Lucasfilm, who feels the need to address every single criticism or controversy that comes up about one of their properties. I've never really encountered a company that is so quick to throw out blanket statements with nothing really to base them on. It's more sad than anything. It's like whoever is running the Star Wars social media accounts is just as big of a troll as the people they're trying to address. Last time I checked, these accounts are designed to represent the company both publicly and professionally. Yet all they seem to do is cause more division amongst an already divided fan base. That makes sense. So just as predicted, the new Obi-Wan TV series has its own batch of controversies. And it all begun over people expressing valid criticisms over that show. Criticisms that typically involve poor writing, or poor acting, or just poor execution altogether. Is it really that big of a stretch for people to believe that the Obi-Wan series is poorly written? Here she comes to wreck the day! Lucasfilm has a documented history of not planning things out, or shooting a movie off of a first draft script, or just flat out creating inconsistencies in the lore. And the people who actually work for Lucasfilm have admitted as much. Furthermore, is it really that big of a stretch to say Lucasfilm doesn't really care about diversity and representation as much as they claim to? When people like John Boyega, who work for them, have come out publicly and expressed their displeasure with how their character was treated. That's racist. But if I say the same exact thing, then I get labeled something. What it really comes down to, and I think the biggest problem with this whole situation, are the people who blindly support this shit. Because there are literally people out there who like the character of Reva just because she is black. It doesn't matter to them that she is written like shit. Because shit representation is still better than no representation, so we're just gonna praise Disney for it. Yes, queen! Meanwhile, all that really does is send a message to Disney that they have the right of way to create mediocre entertainment. And now they have these blind supporters who are acting as a shield and protecting them from criticism. So I'm going to ask this question. At what point does it become a lost cause for us to speak honestly about Star Wars? To be clear, I will never give up my fight to make movies what they once were. That is my whole goal with this channel, and I'm not going to abandon that goal. But damn right, that's the only way I work, Cap. But I think we are beyond that point with a property specifically like Star Wars. Because nothing can really save this dead brand outside of Disney selling it. And we all know that's never going to happen. But what exactly is the end game here? I can make videos for days and days that will accomplish absolutely nothing because nobody else is willing to speak up. If a fan expresses valid criticisms about a character like Reva and gets labeled as a racist or a sexist or toxic because of it, then doesn't that send a message that Star Wars is no longer worth fighting for? I don't care! I mean, Jesus Christ, people were criticizing the goofy-ass Leia scenes in the woods, and now all of a sudden the narrative is that people are harassing the young actress online. 
Calling someone or anyone's performance annoying is not harassment. I don't give a fuck how old they are. I thought that Dakota Fanning was one of the most annoying young actresses in history when she first arrived on the scene. It doesn't mean that I never wanted to see her work ever again. Maybe she just needed to be in a better situation. A situation that would allow her to flourish. Okay. Say yourself. And this goes the same for the chick playing Reva or the chick playing young Leia. Disney and Lucasfilm literally have a history of taking talented actors or actresses and placing them in shit movies where there's not really much they can do with the material. Look at Adam Driver if you don't believe me. Look at Oscar Isaac. Two very capable actors undermined by terrible writing. That's right, it stinks! This isn't an isolated incident where people are calling out bad writing in Star Wars. It's been this way since Disney bought the property. So why is it egregious to say it about these two characters? Because one of them is a minority and they are both women, they are somehow above criticism? I have no doubt in my mind that there are people out there who have said fucked up shit to or about these two actresses. But do you know what you do with people like that? You ignore them and don't give them the attention that they crave. Take a big step back and literally FUCK YOUR OWN FACE! What you don't do is make blanket statements and make it seem as if the Star Wars fan base is riddled with racists. Surprise, surprise, another fragile white male who's gonna make a video about how angry he is at a tweet. Newsflash, man baby, Star Wars doesn't belong to you anymore. And a character as strong and as brave as Reva is should never be labeled as poorly written. And if you say such things, then you deserve to be canceled. And don't give me the, oh, well, if it upsets you, then it must be about you bullshit. Because all that is is more deflecting and you all know it. Anyone with a brain knows these statements were made about the Star Wars fan base to deflect any kind of criticism that this character might face. Here's a question, who's protecting Obi-Wan's character? Because I also expressed that his writing was more egregious than anything. I have a bad feeling about this. Truth is, I've seen a lot of people say a lot of fucked up things today, and a lot of people showed their true colors. But I'm not going to allow myself to be swayed by these bullshit narratives. And I'm certainly not going to stop speaking the truth. If you are blissfully happy with shit content, then you have my blessing and I hope you enjoy it. But I'll be here doing what I do best, and that's demanding better. Because I actually give a shit about the property of Star Wars. Even if I shouldn't. Y'all be cool. Right on.